dear uh, brothers in christ uh, today you know, we are going to study a important time prophecy last week we studied about uh, bible chronology where we saw how the bible speaks about the clear time from the creation of adam till the christ first advent so today <clears throat> we are going to study a further uh, time prophecy Uh, which is very very important to understand the much more deeper things which are going to come in the coming days sir so let us understand how do we un unlock this time prophecies see in the bible there are lot of time prophecies not only prophecies time prophecies lot of things are there so it is very important to understand how do we unlock this time prophecies because all the prophecies are not the same way there is a particular method You see, to unlock it, then only it really correctly fits the divine plan of the ages. So today we are going to take two examples. One is from the book of Daniel, another is from the book of Leviticus. Okay, two prophecies we are going to see how to unlock this one. The first thing is uh, we are going to study about uh, Daniel nine chapter, the prophecy about uh, Christ's first advent, the seventy week prophecy. So before studying this seventy uh, weeks prophecy. we need to understand the background why god gave this prophecy of 70 weeks to daniel so if you see in daniel 8 chapter <clears throat> there we see that uh, daniel was shown a vision about the ram and the he goat and how that the holy sanctuary of god shall be trodden down and the god's holy people uh, shall be scattered and persecuted and how the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and uh, how that uh, you see uh, the sanctuary will be cast down so all these things uh, were shown in a vision to daniel and uh, let us read that verse uh, so we will be able to read ashish brother will you be able to read or uh, brother peter will be able to read daniel 8 chapter mm, uh verse uh, 13 and verse 14 peter padh din wala daniel 8 chapter verse 13 brother and 14 from bible or from the bible screen from the bible uh, because the screen is lot of verses is there uh, not this particular verse But the rest of other verses you can read from the screen. But this particular verse, if you can read from the Bible, it will be very kind. Daniel. Bro, you got it. Okay, okay. Daniel eight, eight, right? Daniel eight, chapter verse thirteen. फुलफिल the vision concerning the daily sacrifice the reveling revelation 
rebellion that ca causes dislocation in the center of the sanctuary and of the host that will be trampled underfoot. He said to me, it will take uh, 2300 every things and uh, evening and mornings, then the sanctuary will be reconsecrated. Very good. So here, uh, Daniel has shown the vision saying that uh, this will continue for 2300 days. 2300 days means what? Uh, it is actually nearly six and a half years. So, Daniel began to think that uh, Israel is going to be punished for further, you see, six and a half years. Because, you see, Daniel was a prophet and uh, he had studied from the books of the prophecies that how God would punish Israel for their sin. We all know that the last king of Israel was Zedekiah. Since then, the people of Israel were taken captivity to Babylon for a particular fixed period of 70 years. That one we can read from 2 Chronicles 36.22. Uh, brother, you can read from the screen. Uh, now, in the first year of uh, Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of the Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in written saying. Saying mm, that uh, Israel shall be Huh? land shall be desolate for a period of 70 years. So, after reading uh, this uh, prophecy, you see, Daniel uh, misunderstood God's plan. He thought that after this 70 years of punishment, he thought God is going to give them additional punishment of six and a half years. Therefore, Daniel began to pray to the Lord. So, what did he pray? He began to confess the sins of Israel and pray to the Lord. Daniel 9 chapter, verses 2 to 5. Two to five. Ashish, brother, can you read? Okay. I'll read for you. In the first year of the reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books uh, the number of the years uh, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, uh, that he would accomplish 70 years in desolation of Jerusalem. You see, he understood from the book of Jeremiah that the 70 years of desolation will be, you see, happen uh, for the people of Israel. Then immediately he set his face, you see, to God and uh, prayed uh, and uh, supplicated with fasting and prayer. And what did he pray? If you read verse 4 and 5, it says, I prayed unto the Lord and made my confession. You see, and said, O oh Lord, you see, the great and the dreadful uh, God keeping the co covenant, you see, and mercy to them that uh, love him and keep his commands. We have sinned and have committed iniquity. We have rebelled uh, against the judgments. Uh, that's what the prayer of, uh, you see, uh, Daniel was there. So, as uh, Daniel began to confess his sin and ask forgiveness from the Lord, then God sent uh, Gabriel the angel. You see, why did God send uh, Gabriel the angel? Because Daniel had uh, wrongly understood the vision of 2300 days in Daniel 8 chapter. To correct him, to give a proper clear explanation to Daniel about, uh, you see, Daniel uh, prophecy about 2300 days, the Gabriel come. Hence, if you read uh, Daniel 9 chapter verse 22, 23, you see, it says, <coughs> uh, and while uh, I was uh, speaking and praying, Confessing my sins and the sins of my people Israel. You see, huh? 
the supplication before the Lord, my God, uh, holy mountain of God. While I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision in the beginning, uh, he caused to fly swiftly. And uh, he came and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill, understanding. At the beginning of this application, that means at the beginning of your prayer only, God gave me the commandment uh, to go forth uh, and uh, make him understand the matter and consider the vision of 2003 in a day. Hence, so, Gabriel comes and clearly explains what actually is going to happen in the 2003 in a day. In Daniel 9.24, it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy city. You see, that means uh, here uh, the angel is saying, don't worry completely about the 2,300 days. Uh, entire 2,300 days or six and a half years is not fixed for you. In that one, only 70 weeks uh, initially, the first portion of the 70 weeks are appointed for you. The balance is nothing concerning Israel. So, here the angel was telling Daniel to worry only about the 70 weeks which are first appointed to Israel. So, 70 weeks means what? You see, 70 weeks means actually 490 days. So, almost a year, more than a year. So, Daniel was told that only 70 weeks among the 2,300 days are appointed to Israel. Now, let us see what is going to happen in a 70 weeks. If you continue reading the prophecy, it says, uh, you see, uh, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin and to make a reconciliation of iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So, in this 70 weeks, that God has given to Israel, these uh, six points has to happen, it seems. Uh, to finish the transgression, make an end of sin, reconciliation of iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness to seal up the vision and the prophecy, to anoint the most holy. These things have to happen, it seems. Uh, so, 70 weeks are determined. Uh, you see? So, when uh, these 70 weeks will start, and when the 70 weeks will end, uh, that is given to us in next verse, Daniel 9, 25, which says, Know therefore and understand that from going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. You see, clearly understand. From the commandment to restore Jerusalem till Messiah the Prince shall be, you see, 70 weeks. You see, I'll read again. You see, uh, know therefore, understand that uh, from the going forth of the government to restore and to build Jerusalem and to Messiah the Prince uh, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Uh, you see, that means 69 weeks. Sorry, it's not 70, it's 69 weeks. Uh, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times, it seems. Uh, so, till the Messiah, it shall be 70 weeks, it seems. Uh, you see, so you can see here. You see, huh? from uh, the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem till Messiah, it is 69 weeks, it seems. Okay? So then after 69 weeks, Messiah will come, it seems. Then Messiah will come and do what? That is uh, given to us uh, in verse, uh, you see, 25 to 27. Huh? Uh, I'll read for you. Uh, from verse 26 and verse 27. And after, you see, three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, you see, but uh, for the people, uh, you see. And verse 27, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and the middle of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. That means Messiah, you see, shall be there in the last week, it seems. In the last week, what he will do, it seems. In the middle of the week, he will die, it seems. And you see, 
Uh, he will die not for himself. He shall be cut off not for himself, but for the people. We all know very well that Jesus died for the people. Then Jesus will come from the sacrifice and all. You see, covenant with many people, it's himself. So what is this uh, 70 weeks? Uh, uh, then uh, does it mean that uh, Jesus was really on this earth only for a uh, half week? Uh, three and a half days? Uh, after three and a half days, Jesus died? Uh, no. Then how do we understand uh, this prophecy? See, this prophecy says, the Messiah shall be there for a week. And in the middle of the week, he shall be cut off. So, literal common sense tells us that Jesus was not alive on this earth only for, it never did his ministry only for three and a half days. But it was a great day. So, how do we decode it? See, for the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. In the Bible, a day means one year. We all know, you see, one day for our Lord means how many years? Thousand years. Isn't it? So similarly for a prophet, one day in the Bible means actually one year. Where is it given? It is given to us in Ezekiel 4 chapter 6 verse. I read for you. And though when and when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on the right side, and thou shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah for today. I have appointed thee. Each day for a year. You see, God has appointed each day for a year. So, for a prophet, one day means one year. So, 70 weeks means what actually? 70 weeks, weeks means 490 days. So, for a prophet, one day means one year. That means 490 days is actually 490 years, not literal days. So, similarly, dear brethren, when the Bible says that Jesus shall be present, you see, after 69 weeks and in one week, uh, you see, he will uh, confirm the covenant with many. But in the middle of the week, that is three and a half days, after three and a half days, uh, he shall be cut off means, you know, what does it mean? It doesn't mean literal three and a half days, it means three and a half years. You see, we all know when Jesus was called the Messiah, you see, Jesus was not called the Messiah from uh, his birth. You see, Jesus was called as a Messiah. At baptism. Before that one he was Jesus. But when did Jesus become Christ anointed? At baptism. So this is speaking about a time period. When Jerusalem shall be built. Till Messiah's baptism. So when was the commandment given to. You see. Uh, rebuilt uh, the Jerusalem city. You see dear brethren. There are two commandments. We should never uh, misunderstand. One command was uh, to. Beautify the temple that was in the days of Ezra. Okay, but this prophecy is not speaking about uh, uh, building the temple or beautifying the temple. This is speaking about uh, uh, restoring Jerusalem. The walls of Jerusalem shall be built in troublous times. That actually happened in the days of Nehemiah. This is given to us uh, in detail in Nehemiah second chapter verses one to three, where Nehemiah was a cup bearer for King Arthur It Was very sad before him. The king asked him, what do you want? Why are you so sad? And he tells, how can I be happy when my uh, father's sepulchre are uh, without protection and the walls of my father's city are broken down? Then uh, Arthur Exus gives him, you see, leave and gives all the materials to go and construct the walls of Jerusalem. So, the walls of Jerusalem were built then in very tribulous times. 12 years leave was granted. You see, they built the city in 52 days built the walls of the city. How they built it? One, one, one hand they held the sword. In other hand, you see, they built the walls of Jerusalem. So, it was built in tribulous times. So, dear brethren, this is the commandment that I was speaking here. So, when, <coughs> is, so when was this commandment given? If you see, dear brethren, that commandment was given in 454 BC. You see, from there, Till Messiah, that means till Jesus' baptism, he is how many years? You see, it says it is 483 years. So, 483 years from 454 BC, if you calculate, we come to 29 AD. Subtraction, 483 minus 454, it will become 29 AD. So, 29 AD is the year when Jesus actually took baptism and Jesus became the Messiah. So, dear brethren, we all know this uh, AD and BC, you see, bifurcation. BC means before Christ, AD means what? It is not after the death of Christ. 
You see, AD means actually in the year of the Lord. So before Christ and all, it goes in a minus value. But uh, AD comes in an additional, uh, you see, uh, uh, value. So it's a negative and a positive value. So we all have learned this one in the school days. Uh, you see, therefore, the brethren, Jesus was baptized as 20 in AD. So how many years did Jesus do his ministry? He did three and a half years. Where is it given in the Bible? It is given only in this prophecy. Apart from this prophecy, nowhere in the Bible is given that Jesus did three and a half years ministry. So therefore this verse says, you see, he shall come from the covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week, he shall be cut off. That means he shall die. So Jesus died three and a half years after his baptism, dear brethren. But uh, why did Jesus die? You see, Jesus died uh, never for his own sins, but for sins of the people. But Jesus dying on the cross, what all he did, he fulfilled all the prophecies that was mentioned in Daniel 9.24. He finished the transgression. He made the end of sins. He made reconciliation for iniquity. You see, how? By his own sacrifice on the cross. He brought everlasting righteousness. That means everlasting forgiveness. Israel had temporary forgiveness. If they gave sacrifice, then only the sins were forgiven or else the sins were never forgiven. But Jesus' sacrifice was once for all given and that was forever and ever. Then uh, Jesus' death was a guarantee that all the prophecy in the Bible, all the visions will be fulfilled. And uh, Jesus, uh, by his death, uh, he entered the church with the Holy Spirit, uh, dear brethren. So these all things were fulfilled. But after the death of Jesus, uh, huh, how many years uh, and when did Jesus die? 29 AD he was baptized. Three and a half years if you had to 29 AD. We will get 33 AD. So 33 AD is the year when Jesus died on the cross. The Bible says, another three and a half years he shall make a covenant with many. That means in further three and a half years, the gospel was given to the people of Israel till 36 AD. Israel was given the favor. After 36 AD only, the news, good news went to the Gentiles. You remember the first Gentile convert, Cornelius, who went and preached the good news? Peter. How many years later? After death of Jesus Christ, it was three and a half years that the good news went to Cornelius, dear brethren. So, this one, dear brethren, clearly says about this prophecy about Jesus' first advent. Then, as uh, people of Israel crucified uh, uh, Jesus, uh, God punished them. That is also mentioned in Daniel 9.26. Uh, you see, Israel shall be scattered and destroyed and desolation shall come. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, uh, this is a clear proof uh, that, uh, you see, Jesus' uh, first advent, when did it happen? Uh, you see, so uh, we all know very well that uh, this was one of the prophecies that uh, Jesus uh, uh, Died like this uh, in that uh, particular uh, this one. Okay. Now, uh, after this prophecy, let us take one more prophecy how to decode this in the same way. That is uh, given to us in Luke 21st chapter, 24th verse. Okay. Uh, to Luke 21, 24. Uh, Peter, brother, can you read Luke 21, 24? Are you able? Yeah, okay. Hmm. And this shall fall by the Age of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Very good, Buddha. See, here it says, You see, uh, Israel shall fall by the age of the sword, they shall be taken captivity, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down. Imagine. Not the people. People are taken captivity, but Jerusalem, the land of Jerusalem shall be trodden on his himself. By whom? By the Gentiles. Gentiles will rule on J Jerusalem, it seems. Till when? Till the times of Gentiles are fulfilled. That means God has fixed a particular time for the Gentiles to rule his himself. Now, what is the Gentile times? Where is it given? When God gave the Lord to the people of Israel, God gave blessings and punishment. One such punishment is given to us in Leviticus 26 chapter where he says, you see, if Israel sin against God, God shall punish them seven times. And this seven times, seven times, seven times, God repeats four times. 
Leviticus 26, 18, Leviticus 26, 21, and verse 24 and 28. And it says, verse 28, And you will not take for all this year current to me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Seven times is what? Additionally, seven times. So, a time, what is the time in the Bible means? A time in the Bible always means a year. That one, we will go to study shortly in a few days. Okay, You see, that is given to us in Daniel 7.25 also. Okay, so seven times actually means seven years. Okay, now actually this uh, times, times uh, uh, and after time, everything is actually the same period. Okay, the, about these things, we are going to study it in a detail in the coming days. Okay, but now to speak shortly to you, you see, uh, how many months are there in a year? 12 months. How many days are there in a month? If you see, you see, biblical calendar has got 30 days in a month. In our calendar, how many days are there? 30 is there, 29 is there, 31 is there. Correct, no? But uh, as per the biblical calendar, yeah, it is composed of 30 days. Okay? That is what is given to us in, uh, you see, Revelation 12.6, Revelation 12.14, Revelation 13.5. Where it is mentioned in three three different types, 1,260 days, three and a half years, and 42 months. So if you cross-check all these things, 1,260 days divided by 42 months will get uh, three and a half years. Again, three and a half years, uh, you see, into uh, uh, 30 days per month, if you will calculate, you will get 1,260 days. So everything is one and the same. Now, okay. Now let us come to these seven years. Again, the same key we are going to apply. One year for a prophet is equal to one day is for a prophet is equal to one year. So seven years means what? Huh? Seven years means we're going to first convert it into days. How many days are in there in seven years? We're going to calculate. If we calculate seven years into 360 days, we will get 2520 days. So 2520 days means 2520 years for a prophet because it's a prophecy. So what God was telling is that. You see, huh? from the day the Gentiles will rule on Jerusalem, it is going to be for a period of how many years? Sir? You see, 2,520 years it seems. Sir. So when did the Gentiles began to rule? It was some King Nebuchadnezzar, when the last king of Israel. You see, Zedekiah died. What happened? You see, Babylon king came and ruled upon Jerusalem. So when did he rule? It was a 606 BC. You have studied that one in Daniel 2nd chapter, 7th chapter class. So from 606 BC, if we calculate 2520 years, we will get a 1914, 1914 year. That is 1914 AD. So 1914, what we see in the world prophecy, if you see the it was the first world war. You see, Bible speaks, uh, the book of Daniel speaks, uh, you see, uh, about uh, First World War, Luke 24 chapter, Jesus Christ spoke about the First World War. So in the First World War, what happened? If you, see, then, uh, you see, you see this multi-metallic structure here, that's a human government. You see, the stone came and hit uh, this uh, human structure, the world governments in 1914. Therefore, before this one, there was no world war. This was the first world war. Then, so, in this first world war, what happened was that uh, the hold upon the land of Jerusalem came in the hands of the Britishers. Uh, and the British people released that land to the people of Israel. And Israel got independence on May 14, 1948. Therefore, this prophecy is also again a prophecy which is related to God's plan. So, the two prophecies we have studied, in these two prophecies, the main thing we need to understand is that for a prophet, one day means one year. Not literally one day. One day means one year. So, dear brethren, this is how a small clue is given to understand the prophecies of the Bible. Uh, 